Welcome to Awakening You channel. If you appreciate what we do, please support us. Thank you. Dear ones. I am Archangel Michael. Once again, I want to pass on to you all my satisfaction, my joy with our meeting yesterday. It was really good, it was wonderful. You really gave yourself to that moment. Very good. I hope as time goes by that more people will join us. With each live entry, the number of people is increasing little by little, for me this is great, because people are understanding and making a point of feeling my energy. You know how to separate everything that is said here from what is speaking to you, she is she, I'm me. I'm glad you understand this, I'm glad you feel the energy I convey. Many of you felt everything I went through for you yesterday, and it is magnificent. So for those who are still unsure whether it's me or not, I invite you to participate in one of these meetings. And you will realize exactly what is being done here. In this group, there is no imposition, there is only guidance. You have the free will to do or not do what I ask or what I advise, I'm not taking anyone by the hand and forcing anyone to do anything. So, I invite you to be part of this group, not just listen to look for errors in what I say, or look for flaws that might point out that I'm not the one speaking. But simply let yourself be enveloped by this energy, let yourself be enveloped by this evolution, open your heart. Next time I hope to count on each one of you who didn't have the courage to take the test, because many hear, but don't believe. So why don't they take the test? Why don't you participate, to feel my energy there, at that moment? So I invite you, take the test, nothing will happen to you. Everything I do with each of you is with your permission. The cleaning that was done yesterday, you repeating the prayer that I said, you gave me authorization to do what will be done. So I don't do anything, the walk is all yours, you choose the path, you choose how to walk. But congratulations to those who are involved, who are ready, and who let themselves be carried away by this whole process. As if you were on a big buoy, in a very gentle river, and letting yourself be carried along by the small waves, or perhaps the big waves. So many are learning to overcome the obstacles that come with big waves, and they are learning to overcome them one by one. So once again, congratulations to everyone who wants to continue walking, letting themselves be carried by these waves and accepting my protection. Well, today I'm going to continue talking about Sananda. In the previous video, I told you that Sananda knew exactly what he was doing at the time of the crucifixion. Why he was doing that? He had already planted the spark of love, the Christ spark in the heart of every inhabitant of this planet. And as guardian, of this planet with each reincarnation, with each new soul that arrives on this planet, this spark is reinvigorated, and for new souls it is placed. So that his word, all those teachings, even if they are distorted by your religions, continue to have an effect, continue to act in your hearts. And so you all know who Jesus Christ was the Son of God on earth. So you already understand that he is as much a Son of God as you are. Yes, he is an evolved soul for sure, he is a very evolved soul, but he is as much a Son as you are. Did he represent our Father or Mother God on this planet? Yes, he represented and represents, as each of you also represents our Father or Mother God. I ask you to start erasing that image of that old man with the white beard sitting on a cloud in the sky. This doesn't exist. You have been forced to believe that our father or mother God has the same form as you, that you were created in his likeness. No, and who are the other people that exist in the universe similar to? Are there several gods, one for each planet, one for each race? Obviously not, there is only one God. And this God has his divine spark in every people in this universe. So he is not, you were not created in his image and likeness, you were created with his divine spark, that is. So everyone is a child and representation of our father or mother God. But not physical, just spiritual, as a soul you are his representation, because you contain a piece of him which is the divine spark. And today you also contain a piece of the divine spark of Sananda, which is the guardian of this planet. 
So let's start eliminating some images that you keep trying to keep in your mind even though you know the truth. All of this was created by the lack of knowledge at the time, because at the time that their religious books were created, the universe did not exist, there was only the planet Earth, nothing more, you were unique in the universe. So all this had to get out of their minds. But as time went by, with all the discoveries, everything that was against these teachings, these truths, was fought precisely by who? For their religions, so that they would not lose power. Because if you found out that everything they had said was wrong, how would you behave? You would no longer respect, and you would be very rebellious towards all teachings. Many of them focused exclusively on the greater good of those in power at the time. I can tell you that very few rulers over the centuries have governed with the people in mind. This is a feeling that was placed in you from power, from Atlantis, where those guardians of the temples were presented with a way of manipulating the people. Something they couldn't do because it was against the laws of the time, it was against the laws of the fifth dimension. So, at that time, everyone had their own mentality, and did not accept being dominated by anyone, because everyone thought about the whole, never about themselves. So this idea of the power of manipulating the people comes from there. And that's where it all started and is still there today. Rare cases are those where rulers think about the people, think about the good of the people. The vast majority just want power, and it is this power that undermined their planet, it is this power that ended peace on their planet. Because each time, they want more power, each time they want to manipulate whoever they can. So some countries have become much more, I won't say important, but stand out in relation to the others, because they always want to be at the forefront of everything that happens. And this grew over the centuries and centuries and eras. So 2000 years ago, when Sananda became a soul again, took off his human clothes, he has been observing this growth, this immeasurable power, this lack of love for others. And then you have many examples throughout the ages of this type of supremacy of their rulers, one before the other. Then someone one day thought someone with black skin was very strange, that couldn't be a divine thing, because after all Adam and Eve were white. So who would those people be there with such black skin? These people cannot live with us, thought the rulers of the time, because we are all superior, because we came from Adam and Eve. I'm going to do a part here, I hope that each one of you, with the amount of information I have given here, has already demystified this story of Adam and Eve. This was the representation found by the church, to explain you being on the planet. Where did you come from? So they invented this story. Please, it is no longer appropriate at this moment, in this era, for you to believe this little story. Back to where I was. So the rulers decided to be superior to that race, because it was different from the rest of the planet, everyone they knew was white. How did those people have black skin? So what to do, kill? You cannot kill, because it is one of the commandments, you shall not kill. So they didn't want to have this stain on their souls. So they thought it would be good to enslave, ah, then they will be beings who will not have a voice, they will be beings who will not even have the right to anything. We will do with them whatever we want, because they are invaders of this perfect world of white men and women. And so at some point in its history slavery began with African beings. So you realize that power has always been the great spring of the dark. That's what I've already told you here, my brothers, in the same way that I don't take anyone by the hand and lead them wherever I want, the dark ones don't do that either. They just put something in front of you that might catch your attention, and your free will chooses to follow it or not. How has good always remained in balance with evil on this planet, no matter how much you think it is not? Because there have always been people who knew how to say no to those temptations, as you like to call them. They had the free will to say no, I don't want this for myself, and they continued walking on the path of good. But many, for the simple pleasure of power, of being able to have power over others, agreed to follow this path. So there is no such thing as, so I did it because they told me to. No one orders anything, no one takes anyone by the hand. You make a choice, 
and stay on the path of good, or choose that path that will not take you to the path of evolution. Then realize how your race was degraded, just for power. Then there was the slavery of Africans, soon afterwards the wars began, the wars for territory, because one wanted to take what the other had, because there was something valuable on the other's land, because if there was nothing valuable, no one would want to invade the other's land. For what? The problem is that that black liquid has become an object of greed. And then, let's invade someone else's country, to have access to what they have, and take for yourself what belonged to the other. So realize that you were simply forgetting all the rules of love for others, of respect, of harmonious coexistence. Yes, you could remain countries, for a long time, as long as each person respected their space, one did not influence the other's life. Why should I worry about the people of the other country? But then came the business. I need to do business, because he has what I don't have. So, I need to win over that client or that supplier, so I can survive in my country. And then came the exchanges, the trade began and where the cultures began to mix. I'm not speaking here in chronological order, my brothers. Don't try to understand my reasoning. I'm talking, as a whole. I'm not here following dates. I'm talking about everything the human race has done to date. Then, cultures began to change. Habits were invaded by habits from other countries. This immense country, Brazil, where you live, is a recent country, it is not many years old. In relation to the rest of the European continent, this country is very recent, it has a new history. Very good. And why was it colonized? For the expansion of the lands, of those who arrived here and found this world of lands. Ah, I found it. It's mine. Very good. And so it was, in many other countries. So, you were spreading across the planet, without any respect for each other. Always invasions, always wars, battles, for one to take over the other's peace. This continent here, this entire chain of land that goes from South America to North America, was not colonized very long ago, but the continents, European and Asian, were the beginnings of cultures on this planet. So they caused an entire expansion of the planet. But always, if you can observe, the word power is always first. Why am I saying all this? It's as if I were reproducing Sananda's vision after he emerged from human clothing. Sananda continued observing everything he had left, even where his words had been absorbed, how far his words had been multiplied. Unfortunately he sadly saw that much of what he said was distorted. That people used their words, their history, to create religions. Each one in their own time, each one in their own way, each one created the way they thought was right, from what they understood. Because he taught many things in parables, parables have this property that everyone can understand the way they want. So they would take a phrase that was said by Sananda and explain it the way they wanted. And once again submission happened to the people, the powerful were the ones who made the decisions and decided the rules. Then, you remember that there were battles for faith. The Crusades were the great example of manipulation of soldiers at the time, just to eliminate all those who did not follow the religion they imposed, but in truth, the main purpose there was to eliminate their enemies, and more specifically to acquire wealth, acquire goods of many who were on the way. In this way, Religion grew a lot, taking over the planet with its financial power, but not conquered by faith, conquered by imposition, by killing. Very good. The years passed, there were no major wars, however, there was always a dispute here and there, that never stopped. And as those who have power always want more power, the tendency has been to increasingly increase the atmosphere on this planet, of separateness. And then many may say, but if Sananda was observing all this, couldn't he have done something? I already said this, but you make a point of forgetting, we were always here, we never abandon you. Because if we had effectively abandoned you, if we had not kept that scale in balance with evil, you would no longer be on this planet today, or rather, this planet would have already been destroyed. Because that's where you were going to get to. 
Everything was ready for this, for the destruction of this planet by nuclear war. This was the timeline formed by you. The future, my brothers, does not exist, it is formed every moment. So according to your walk, we can see the timeline and see your future, but if you change your walk, you change your future, it is changeable from moment to moment. So at that moment, the future we saw on this planet was total destruction of it. Because you would not be able to survive on such a radioactive surface and the planet would die. So it is as if, with each war, each conflict, each attempt to eliminate, to destroy, Sananda's concern became greater and greater, he became more and more uncomfortable with the situation. And of course, Sananda does not work alone, there is a large council that, where problems of each star, can be taken to him and discussed, organized. And Sananda began to have contact with this council, exposing his concern in relation to this planet, because he realized that every minute of every moment, you were destroying yourselves and would destroy the planet together. So you have to remember this, Sananda's love for you is immeasurable, it is unconditional. So he had to do something to help them. Over time, many people have incarnated here with today's ideas, they were people from high dimensions who could already put some ideas on the planet. People at strategic points. I will cite as an example the one you know today as Saint Germain. How many incarnations did he have on this planet, precisely to bring the necessary light at that moment? So many of you don't know, but you passed through your planet to bring light, to bring a little balance to all that feeling that was being created, of destruction. With the First World War, the entire universe began to observe this planet, it's as if something in their hearts starts to bother them too. And then they were sure of what Sananda had already warned, that something would have to be done on this planet, or you would destroy yourself. The planet would die. Of course, all of this was promoted by the Dark Ones, obviously. People were prepared by them over time to assume certain roles during these wars. But the first war was still not enough for them to believe that anything could happen. But the planet was being observed. It's as if everyone's eyes turned this way. So my brothers, who likes history, realize how much this planet was attacked, how much your brothers were attacked and killed just for power, just for trying to take what you want from others. So tomorrow, I will close this story, and you will understand, why everything happened and how we are here today talking. I am Archangel Michael. I am here to help each of you on this journey, illuminating your ideas and eliminating your limiting beliefs.